is Marnie McLean and this tutorial is on making color charts in Adobe Illustrator specifically as it applies to knitting and crocheting and cross stitching and those sorts of things. I'm using Adobe Illustrator CS3 on a Mac. Your interface and your tools may vary slightly if you're using a different operating system or um, a different version of Illustrator. I'll be referencing palettes, these boxes of tools, throughout the tutorial. If you ever find that um, you don't have a palette up that I'm referencing, you can go to your Windows menu and you should find the palette in here. And I'll tell you what the palette is called and you can just look for it. So colors, swatches, stroke, and, and tools are all palettes that you'll need to have available and you can grab those anytime from your Windows menu. My first step in setting up for a chart is to define the colors that I want to use. If I know the type of yarn I want to use, a brand name, or I have a specific set of yarns in my stash, I can use those as a reference. And for those of you who feel totally comfortable getting those colors by sight, either by clicking on a similar color in this little WYSIWYG bar here, or by actually sliding these sliders around appropriately to get the color you want. Go ahead and do that. You can skip this section. I think an easier way to do that is to simply go over to the internet. I'm looking at Cascade 220 here, which is a yarn with a huge selection of colors. And on a, on a Mac with Firefox, I can just drag these color swatch images onto my desktop. Just scroll down grabbing the colors you like. If you're on a PC you may need to right click and do save image as and some browsers also do not support drag and drop in which case again right click save image as and you can save it where you want to put it. So I'll just grab a couple of these here maybe one more and you just grab whichever ones you think you're going to need go back to Illustrator and simply drag and drop those onto your page I will using the selection tool which is the letter V to activate it or you can activate it from the tool palette just placing these on the page spread out so I can see them all. I have all six of them. Now click the letter Z to get the zoom tool and zoom in on a color card. Click the letter I that'll activate the eyedropper tool and I want to scroll over so you can see the color palette while I do this. Click somewhere on the color card and it automatically updates the color box here. You may have noticed that depending on where you click, you might get a really dark shadow color. You could get a very, very light highlight color. The eyedropper selects the exact pixel you're over at that point. So, you know, click and hold, feel around until you find that color that absolutely represents the color that you want. I want to add these to my swatch palette, but I also want to get rid of everything I'm not using. So before I add this, I will go to the flyout in the swatches palette, click select all unused, add anything that isn't working, Oops. select all unused, and then click the delete button. That's going to clear everything out. And now if I click the new swatch button, it'll bring up a dialogue. I can name this if I'd like. I don't really care about that. I'll click enter and it adds the swatch to my swatch palette. It can actually be even faster than that. I can click a color that I like. Maybe I'll go with something a little bluer. And if I hold down option and click new, it doesn't even bring up that dialog box. It just immediately adds that swatch to the palette. If I hold down the space bar, I can drag my page up. And as soon as I let go of the spacebar, I have my eyedropper tool back. So 
I can click Option, Add the Swatch. Once I've added in all my swatches, I Command-0, that gives me the full page. Command A, that selects everything, and delete. I don't need those anymore. I have a bunch of swatches I can play with. These colors roughly match colors that are avail available to me in the yarn that I've chosen. Now I can begin to build my chart. So my first step there is to go to the View menu, Show Grid. This is going to be a grid upon which I build the chart. Right now the boxes of the grid are a little small for my taste, so I'll go up to Illustrator, Preferences, Grids and Guides, Guides and Grids, and I can change this to be a grid line every inch divided into four, and that'll give me quarter inch boxes. Don't agonize over this. The nice thing about Illustrator is you can scale up or down these charts, charts infinitely and you won't lose any quality. So just to make it so it's appealing to you to look at. Now from here I could zoom in, I'm doing command plus a few times and that's letting me get in real close and I could theoretically just hold down shift with my rectangle tool selected, that's the letter M, and draw a perfect box as closely as I could match to one grid square that's really imprecise and you're going to notice that as you build your chart. Instead, I'll delete that, go back to view, snap to grid. I don't have to hold down shift. I just have to start somewhere near one grid line and end somewhere near one grid line and it will make a perfect square for me. And that will work for larger boxes, for rectangles, whatever you want, it will snap to that grid. If I use the snap to grid, I also have the advantage, I'm going to delete that, that when I click on something and I click an arrow button on my keypad, it stays locked to the grid. If I turn off snap to grid, it's just going to move in smaller increments, but it won't necessarily perfectly align to that grid. So we'll use snap to grid a lot. I'm going to delete that. 